All right, guys, what is happening? It is the weekend, and as I promised you the other day, in the Facebook Series 2, Escort RS Turbos, Owners Forum, and the fans page as well, chucked it up in there, putting the engine back in, the Series 2 today. Really excited. A little bit of things to do before we put it back in. Um, so let's cue the intro, and I'll run you through what we've got to do. Now I've got a ride on that. So as you guys saw in the picture, the engine's pretty much back together. Um, so what we're gonna do is just take uh, these out, put some Loctite on them and position everything uh, back in place and then put the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt back in as well. I had to get a slightly longer one um, because the one that was supplied with the, the timing kit just wasn't long enough, even though it was supplied with the kit and then I did, in the end, paint the gearbox satin black. I used a high temp paint, but I don't think the gearbox is gonna get hot enough, hopefully, to even warrant needing a satin paint or, or a high temp paint, but that is gonna sit back on the end of the engine. And then, we're gonna lift it up with our hands and dump it back in here. Now we're gonna use an engine crane. Then we're gonna put it back in here I do need to change these and so on and so forth. But the job for this weekend is to put the engine back in there because I needed my brother's help to do that and he is up here this weekend. So let's get stuck in. All right, so putting the engine back in was heaps easier than taking it out, but we did need to attach the um, brackets or little loop bits to use the engine sling. So did that and then basically disconnected it from the engine stand. Um, David fitted the flywheel, then lined the clutch up not long after that. Um, we did a fanny around trying to torque everything down and all that kind of stuff because we didn't actually have anything to hold the engine still. But eventually we got all that together and then managed to line the clutch up by placing the engine on the floor and just using a dumbbell to prop up the um, back end of the engine where the gearbox connects to. So everything lined up and for you eagle-eyed viewers, yes, we did leave a bit off, but more on that later on in the video. A few moments later. All right, so the gearbox is on now, all attached. Looks nice. A lot of people have been talking about this down here on the block, and this is actually um, for the factory EFI sensor or the factory crankshaft sensor on their EFI model cars. So like basically the Fiesta RS Turbo, the XR3Rs that came with the EFI. But as you can see, as we look through here, I don't have an EFI flywheel. And look, I am out in Australia. <laughs> and the postage on an EFI flywheel to get it sent out here is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Now I do plan on coming over later on this year or early next year or later on next year, I haven't really made my mind up yet. Um, and when I do come over, I will be getting an EFI flywheel and I will be bringing it back over to Australia uh, as excess baggage, because that's a hell of a lot cheaper than paying for the freight to send it over. And this should really work for the meantime. Look, if it doesn't, I'll bite the bullet and I'll get an EFI flywheel sent over. Um, but I do need the little plastic bracket that the uh, crank positioning sensor actually sits in because I don't have that. Um, I do have the crank positioning sensor though, but I don't have the little bracket that it sits in. And of course, in Ford's Infinite Wisdom, there's two different sensors of length, which means there's two different length brackets as well. So it all just gets a bit tricky. But if I need to go down that route, I'll ask you guys in the owner's forum. I'm interrupting today's YouTube production. A few weeks ago, it was my 42nd birthday, and my brother sat back there. You can barely see him in the dark, but hiding behind the engine, he's a bit camera shy. Um, <clears throat> bought me a gift, a birthday gift, but his kids were sick, so he could actually come to my birthday party, um, and he was pretty gutted about that. 
but he's up here working, uh, helping me fit the engine back in the car. A bit of context, when I was five or six, my parents got me a radio controlled car, one of like a hobby grade one, a Timmy or Hornet, and it was a treasure hunt to go and find the car. And the radio control was sat on the couch as the last clue, and it was basically like press the forward stick. So I pressed the forward stick, screaming out from underneath the couch came a Tamiya Hornet, and the couch wasn't quite tall enough, and it ripped the back wing off the Hornet. Today, my brother and his kids did a treasure hunt, and the last clue was um, mine the couch. So <laughs> here we go. And there it is, my brand new Tamiya Hornet, same color as the one I had when I was five business name on the headlights done by my sister-in-law which is ultra cool let's have a go it is every bit that I remember it just bouncing along that's so cool You know, I was thinking of buying one. I was genuinely thinking of buying one, and I was thinking, I've got to paint it silver, like the one I had when I was five. Did well. That's mega. All right, so just quickly before we move on, for you eagle-eyed viewers, when I showed you this earlier, you would have noticed that we left out this black like blanking plate and as you can see now we've just refit, took gearbox off refitted that um, and now there is no hole um, into the transmission for the crank positioning sensor on the factory EFI cars uh, but like I said if I do get that bracket and an EFI flywheel it will just make a hole there in that my lovely new Ford Transit starter motor and then the blanking plate is in at the bottom this looks like something that's come off a different car because it's all cut up the top and it's definitely not an original piece off this car and it looks like we are missing some type of bracket in the Haynes manual. There does look to be a bracket that goes from the gearbox to potentially somewhere on the front or the back of the block but uh, it was never on this car to start with. So we're about ready to put it in almost. Now went time to actually put the engine back into the engine bay and it did actually go in pretty easily. Um, there was a little bit of messing around and that, but it wasn't too much hard work. It was a lot harder taking it out than it was putting it back in. But as I'm about to tell you later on in the video, uh, we did have to take it back out again as soon as we put it in and connected everything. Um, yeah, but like I said in the last voiceover, more on that later. A few moments later, Right, engine is in. I'll walk you through. We had to put it in and then take it out because as you can see down there, let's see if I get my little pointy stick. The bracket for the uh, timing for the EFI was basically just fouling against the inner wall. So then we had to take the engine back out and then massage some space with a hammer and it worked okay. But everything fits in nicely now and of course you guys know the turbo is going to be sat around about here I do still need to change this front panel and I do agree with everyone that's going to comment on everything that it would have just been easier to change it uh, while the engine was out but I needed my brother's help as you saw in the video to put the engine back in um, so that is going to be pretty easy to change with the engine in, as long as obviously I don't put the radiator in and stuff like that, um, and with these extra bolts in and all of this, it's just going to be heaps, heaps, heaps easier to line up as well. There you can see the manifold sat on there. I think David's going to just sit the turbo on top of it. Ooh, look at that. Have some of that. Happy with that. Gotta be happy with that. Leaves heaps of space here now that the ABS is removed. And this is why we left the ABS off because from here the dump pipe's gonna come back 
down through there, which is where the ABS sat on the car. Don't need that. Uh, it's a 34, 35 year old car. Who the fuck wants ABS anyway? So yeah, pretty good. So as you saw, the engine's back in, really happy with that. There's still heaps and heaps and heaps to work through, including the custom wiring loom, um, the brake system, all that sort of stuff. And of course, changing out that front panel. Um, I am going to be changing the engine mounts as well. And again, I do know it would have been easier to do it all at when the engine was out, but um, should be able to just lift the engine up a little bit and change one mount at a time. Um, so that's basically how i'm going to do that but it all comes down to money and shipping things over from the uk as well guys so um like i say as always if you're still here watching at the end of the video then it means you definitely like what you're watching and if you aren't subscribed and you haven't hit the bell to get notifications then you really should be doing that by now thanks guys and i'll catch you in the next video